I'm Angela Meller and I live in Ely, Cambridgeshire in the United Kingdom. I work from my home and studio and gallery. My early training was in art and design at Manchester and that was followed by a teacher training course and it wasn't until my first teaching post that I was introduced to clay when the headmaster asked me if I'd like to go on a pottery course for art teachers. And from the moment I handled clay and made my first pot and impressed a design in it, then I was totally hooked. In 1991, um, I was introduced to working with Bone China with Sasha Wardell. And I took a piece of my porcelain along with me and made a model from that and then cast it, made a mould and cast it in Bone China. And it was just what I'd been looking for. It was the whiteness, the purity, and especially the translucency that captivated me. I then um, left the UK in 1995 to go to Australia, Western Australia, to marry. I was very much influenced by the Australian landscape and the coastline and picking up driftwood and shells and seaweed off the beach. And this filtered through into my work. Because bone china is very thin, you can't just press anything in to create texture. So I was trying to work out how to incorporate texture into my work. And I came up with the idea of mixing white tissue paper into the bone china slip to make a paper clay. I like it because of the textures that I can get in paper clay, which I couldn't just normally get with um, bone china on its own. And if I poured bone china onto a plaster slab with texture, it would just crack and break. But the paper gives it that workability and you're able to manipulate and bend and fold or cut or there's endless possibilities with um, paper clay. And that's what I find exciting. Depending on what I'm inspired by, and I'm inspired by nature all the time, um, I find textures that excite me and I want to use and usually roll these, it could be seaweed or rocks or coral or shells, whatever, and roll or press these into clay. And then I cottle up this and pour in the plaster to make a plaster cast. When the plaster is dry, then I use this to spread my paper clay onto. The paper clay is a mixture of paper pulp and bone china slip which is mixed into a porridge consistency, which I ladle onto the plaster slab and then take a straight edge metal rule to just smooth it across the plaster and then using a nice flat brush to ease the paper clay into the mould to pick up any details. As it dries, um, I then use a rubber kidney to smooth and work it into the texture of the mould, picking up the detail. Once that's done, you can release the paper sheet from the mould, all around the edges first because they dry out quickly, and then peel it off, peel the whole sheet off, and leave it on a builder's board to dry, or a plaster slab would be just as good. After 20 minutes or so, it's dried sufficiently to tear the pieces however you want them or you can cut it with scissors. And because I've done slip casting, then I use my moulds as formers. Anything could be used, you know, a piece of foam or cardboard or whatever, but I use the moulds. And um, when it's semi-dry, then I place these pieces into the mould, each section going round and round, and then joining the edges with a small brush filled with paper slip to join the edges on the inside. That's left overnight to dry and the piece will shrink in the mould. So the next day I can lift it out, just touch up the edges if I need to or neaten them with a sponge and that's ready to be dried out thoroughly and then fired. So I just high fire them to get the translucency and I use an electric kiln, which I find is best for firing bone china. And they're fired to 1260 or cone eight uh, with a 20 minute soak. 
each piece that I do, um, when it's fired, it can take on a life of its own in the kiln um, because it wants to move, the nature of the clay wants to move and it has a memory. So what you've done with it before, it remembers and it might not turn out exactly as you expect it, but it could be a very happy accident. I think I've got to know the nature of it now and I do find my, some of my work in sagas to hold it in certain positions because it could go any way which people will find out <laughs> as they try it out really.